In the natural world, there are boundaries. These are ancient lines drawn by evolution over millions of years, a pact between land and sea written in the language of instinct. The forest has its predators, and the ocean has its own. A wolf does not hunt the shark, and the lion does not hunt the whale. These are the fundamental rules of two separate worlds. But along the remote, fog-shrouded coastlines of the Pacific Northwest, those rules are being broken. An ancient line is being crossed. The ocean's apex predator has found a new and impossible target. This is the story of why orcas have started hunting moose. The moose is a creature of the land, an icon of the northern wilderness. It is the largest member of the deer family, a true giant that can stand seven feet at the shoulder and weigh over 1,500 pounds. Its antlers, a sprawling crown of solid bone, can span six feet across. It is an animal built for a world of snow, dense forest, and frozen tundra. It is powerful enough to fend off packs of wolves and even grizzly bears. On land, it is a king. But the moose has a secret that few people appreciate. It is a phenomenal swimmer. Its coat is made of hollow hairs, providing excellent insulation and buoyancy. It can... A moose can close its nostrils to feed on aquatic plants and can hold its breath for up to a minute. Driven by the search for food or the need to escape predators, a moose will not hesitate to enter the water, paddling for miles across frigid channels and deep fjords to reach new islands and new foraging grounds. In the water, it is strong and surprisingly graceful, but it is also exposed, far from the safety of the forest floor, and utterly vulnerable. The hunter of these waters is the transient, or Biggs, killer whale. This is not the fish-eating orca that lives in large, stable, and vocal family pods. The transient is a different kind of animal altogether. They are a separate culture, a distinct lineage that diverged hundreds of thousands of years ago. They travel in small, silent, efficient packs of assassins, led by an experienced matriarch. Their entire existence is built around a single purpose, hunting marine mammals. Their prey includes seals, sea lions, porpoises, dolphins, and even the calves of great whales. They are masters of strategy and ambush. Unlike their fish-eating cousins, they rarely use echolocation while hunting, knowing their prey has excellent hearing. They hunt in silence, communicating in subtle ways, their movements a coordinated dance of death. They are the wolves of the sea, and to them, any large, air-breathing mammal is a potential meal. For millennia, the world. The world of the moose and the world of the orca existed in parallel, rarely, if ever, intersecting. But in the labyrinthine fjords and island archipelagos of coastal British Columbia and Alaska, these two worlds collide. Here, the dense, temperate rainforest runs directly to the edge of the cold, deep, and nutrient-rich ocean. It is a landscape that forces the moose to swim, and a seascape that provides the perfect hunting ground for the transient orca. For a long time, what happened next was only speculation, a rumor whispered by fishermen and local guides. But then, it was caught on camera. In 2015, a whale-watching boat in a British Columbian fjord witnessed something that defied belief. A large bull moose was swimming across a channel, its massive head held high above the water, its powerful legs churning below. And then, the dorsal fins appeared. A pod of transient orcas. The initial circles were slow, almost curious. The pod surfaced, observed, and seemed to be assessing the strange creature. But then the matriarch gave a signal. The pod's formation tightened, the pace quickened. This was no longer an inspection. It was an appraisal. The hunt had begun. 
The orca's attack was not a frenzied rush, but a cold, calculated, and patient process. They used their bodies to create waves, pushing water over the moose's head, forcing it to expend precious energy just to breathe. One orca would surface in front, blocking its path, while others would flank it, preventing its escape to either shore. They rammed. Its sides, testing its strength and stamina. The lead female directed the attack, communicating with clicks and calls that were likely imperceptible to the moose. Their goal was simple and brutal, to exhaust the moose and drown it. For an animal that evolved to fight bears on solid ground, this was a battle it could not win. It was in an alien environment, fighting the absolute masters of that domain. The struggle was long, but the outcome was inevitable. The king of the forest had become prey for the king of the ocean. This event was not a freak occurrence. It was a confirmation of a behavior that had likely happened for centuries, hidden from human eyes. The question is why. The answer reveals the true nature of the orca. First, it is a matter of pure opportunity and energy. A 1,500-pound moose is a massive caloric prize. It represents a food source far larger than a seal or porpoise. From the perspective of a transient orca, a moose swimming in the open ocean is not a forest animal. It is simply a large, slow-moving, calorie-rich mammal. It fits the same profile as a sea lion or a young whale. The orcas are not specifically seeking out moose. They are simply capitalizing on a rare but valuable chance when it presents itself. Second, this behavior is the ultimate demonstration of orca intelligence and adaptability. These predators are not hardwired with a fixed menu. Their culture is one of learning, problem solving, and passing knowledge down through generations. Different pods have unique hunting traditions, taught by mothers to their offspring. When the first pod of orcas encountered a swimming moose, they would have had to assess the risk, devise a new hunting strategy on the spot, and execute it. The fact that this behavior exists proves they are capable of this complex, innovative thinking. They can identify a novel food source and figure out how to kill it. This is not instinct, it is intellect. Finally, this interaction represents a blurring of ecological boundaries. It is a trophic link, a connection in the food web that is not supposed to exist. A top terrestrial herbivore is being consumed by a top marine carnivore. It shows that ecosystems are not as separate as they appear. Nutrients from the forest, locked within the body of a moose, are being transferred directly into the marine ecosystem, a transaction written in blood. The sight of an orca hunting a moose is shocking because it challenges our understanding of the natural order. But it is not a sign that the world is broken. It is a sign of how ruthlessly efficient and adaptable its greatest predator truly is. It proves that for the transient killer whale, the only rule is survival, and the only boundary is the shoreline. And sometimes even that is not a boundary at all.